Greetings, Sunday School Scholars. Our lesson today is Confident Love. We're on lesson 11, November the 15th, 2020. Our Bible basis is taken from the book of 1 John, the third chapter, verses 11 through 24. Let us pray. Father, it's so easy to say we love one another, but our actions do not often look like love, and our words many times don't sound like love. Forgive us. You have not commanded us to do anything that your Holy Spirit doesn't empower us to obey. May we humble ourselves before you. We repent of our self-righteousness, we will love you and others as you have commanded. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's look at our memory verse. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in them, in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. 1 John, the third chapter, in the 24th verse. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. We dwell in him. And he in him. In other words, Christ dwells in us. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. That's the only way that we can keep his commandments. Let's look at light on the word. There were two brothers, Cain and Abel, and they both brought a sacrifice to the Lord. Abel acted in faith by bringing a sacrifice more suitable than that of Cain, according to Hebrew 11 and 4. Now Cain's rage burned out of control against God's rejection. I mean, out of control. In retaliation, he slaughtered his brother, whose guilt, whose gift had been accepted. Let's be careful, saints. Hatred towards others sometimes seems far easier to obtain than love. Really, Cain was angry because God had rejected his sacrifice. And he took it out on his brother, who offered a better sacrifice. The Lord confronted Cain with his guilt, judged him, and marked him, sending him out of the land. And we can read that story over in Genesis. But let's be careful. We've been talking about love for our brethren. Let's be careful that we don't uh, cause God to judge us because of our motives, because of our feelings toward our brethren. Introduction, love in action. Love is a natural result of God's blessing, not a precondition for it. Let's get that. Love is a natural result of God's blessing. He rained his blessings upon the good and the evil. The commandment to love is an expression of how Christ's disciples should act. Whether we're rich, whether we're poor, Whatever state we're in, we are commanded by God to love. This love has been shed abroad by the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Without actively demonstrating love towards others, how can, how can one really say that he or she loves? We can say, I love you all day long. But if we're not demonstrating that love toward others, then we need to check ourselves because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Love is action. Love is demonstrated. Our first outline, love is spiritual life. 1 John 3 and 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Here it is again. 
The apostle affirms that the person who has passed from spiritual death to spiritual life will love others. And we need to know what that love looks like. Many times people say that if you do what I want you to do, if you give me what I ask you for, if you help me when I ask you to help me, then I know that you love me. The person that cannot love fellow Christians remains in spiritual darkness, which in reality is spiritual death. If love for one another is absent in a community, then that community is not following the way of Jesus. We help those that we know is truly in need. Salvation and love goes hand in hand. Cain, that wicked one. We'll talk about Cain and Abel again. In 1 John 3 and 12, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. Be careful how we treat each other. Be careful how we slander each other. Be careful uh, concerning the words and the things that we say concerning each other. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. If we are characterized by love, it would affect our behavior. Likewise, if we are characterized by hatred, it will certainly show in our behavior. While we may not literally murder people, we may assassinate their character and reputation because of hatred. Let's be careful, saints. 1 John 3, 13 through 15 reads, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you, and let's, um, let me try that again. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Don't be surprised if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brethren abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Now that's some strong teaching. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. If you hate your brother, it's you a murderer. That's the scripture. That's the word of God. The word is characterized by lack of love. The world, the world is characterized by lack of love. Love is a dynamic experience that testifies to the reality of our spiritual journey. Perhaps if you really got to know a person, perhaps if you really had a relationship with a person, you'll realize how much they love you. However, if you're just out to get what you can get from a person, if you're just out to prove points to a person, God knows our motives. If you're slandering your brother's name, God knows our motives to uplift yourself. Having a love for others is evidence of one's maturity and the passage from the, from the death of sin to a life based on faith in Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. Having a love for others is evidence of one's maturity. This is how we know that we grow in God. When we hate our enemies, that's not the love of God. God instructed us to love our enemies. He instructed us to love our brethren. And, the pass and we know that we pass from death of sin to life in Jesus Christ because it's evident by our love. When people criticize us, talk about us, when do things that we don't like, we don't try to scandalize their name. We don't try to, uh, two wrongs never make a right. We don't try to criticize them to others. Love is the evidence of salvation. 
not the way to obtain salvation. We need to learn how to grow up. If something rubbed you the wrong way, go to your brethren. Express how you feel in love. Allow your brethren to respond in love. Pray for one another in love. That's the love of God. Not murder your brethren with your tongue. Let's look at spiritual maturity. A Christian who does not demonstrate love has not matured in his spiritual journey. You don't want to be forever a pouting baby. The absence of love shows that they have yet to come alive spiritually. They have not allowed the Holy Spirit who enables us to produce the fruit of love to act upon their hearts. Produce love in their heart. The Holy Ghost will produce love in our hearts. The danger of the absence of love is hatred of others is evident, is equivalent rather. The danger of the absence of love, hatred of others is equivalent of murder and no murderer is entitled to eternal life. When we slander our brethren, when we hate our brethren, when we tear one another down, it's the absence of love in our hearts. Let's look at the heart of the gospel from 1 John 3.16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. This is how we know that word know, genosco, means to obtain knowledge. This is how we obtain knowledge of the love of Christ, by looking at the life of Jesus Christ. Christ gave his own sinless life to pay the penalty incurred by our sins. Christians are called to a self-sacrificing love rather than a self-preserving love. As beneficiaries of this kind of love, it is incumbent on us to love others in the same way. And saints, we can't do it without the Holy Ghost. We need God's spirit to help us to love the brethren. In our second outline, the topic is love is giving. 1 John 3, 17. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? The needy should move us to tender love or inward affection to share what we have. Compassion from the heart calls us to help. In 1 John 3 and 18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Stop merely talking about love. Show love through deeds and truth. Lord, help us to show love toward all mankind. We cannot deceive God. In 1 John 3, 19, it reads, And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Hereby we know when Christians demonstrate active love, they belong to the truth. When Christ return, we will all stand before him to be judged and rewarded according to our deeds. In 1 John 3 and 20, For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Listen to your heart. If your heart condemns you, God knows. He genosco, he know all things. Our motives for service is known by God. 
He knows our motives. We cannot deceive God. Have the right motive, saints. Love is confident in our third outline. 1 John 3, 21 through 22. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask and we receive of him, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. The Holy Spirit convicts our heart. When we are open and honest, we can, be, we, we can go boldly to the throne of grace and have the assurance that we shall receive whatsoever we pray for that is in line with the word of God according to his will. So that takes out just going to God and asking him for things and believing him for the wrong things. He knows our heart. We will ask in accordance to his word, in accordance with his word, in accordance with in his will. We want to make sure we're in the will of God. We just don't want to go. He's not our jack in the box. He's not our uh, genie in the box. He's not going to just give us anything and everything we ask for. But if we are in him and he in us and our hearts don't convict us, we're walking up right before him. We're not condemned in our hearts. Then we can ask whatsoever we will and he will give it to us. Those things that are pleasing in his sight. Christians are characterized by love. 1 John 3, 23 through 24. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. We abide in him, and he abides in us. And this is how we know that we abide in him, because he has given us his spirit. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ includes agreeing that he is the son of God who gave his life to pay the penalty for our sins. Next, we must love one another. If we keep God's commandments we dwell in him and he in us. We know we abide in him by the spirit being evident in our life, which Christ has given us. Christians are characterized. It's in our character. We're not trying to scheme. We're not trying to pretend, but we are keeping the commandments of God. And because we do the spirit of the Holy Ghost, dwells on the inside of us, leading us, guiding us, directing us, giving us who to shed the love of God in our hearts throughout our life. And that ends our confident love. Let's not forget to support our Sunday School at New Life Community Church of God in Christ on Chambers Road in Givelify, and also you can send your offering in Cash App, dollar sign Cash New Life. May God bless you, and may we keep the love of God and the Word of God in our hearts. See you next week.